Hey, Johnny May here, and welcome to this lesson where I'm going to teach you how to play heart and soul in five levels of difficulty, starting from a beginner level all the way through an advanced level. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, here it is at a beginner level. So there are three keys that you need to play at this level. One, you need to know your major scale, you need to know some major and minor chords, and you also need to know how to play swung eighth notes. So if you look at the tune, I'm basically playing four chords, C major, A minor, F major, and G major, and then I'm just breaking up the chords, doing this little pattern, root to the top two notes, then on the A chord, root to the top two notes, F, same pattern, and then G, same pattern. Now you wanna make sure you're swinging your notes. One, and two, and three, and four, and to get the right feel for this. Lastly, your melody is gonna come from the C major scale, which is all white notes. So the melody is. And then we have a little F sharp going to the G, and walking up to C. All right, before I teach you level number two, if you're enjoying this lesson, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. All right, level number two is the late beginner approach. It has a very cool sound, check it out. Now what makes this sound so interesting is it has a very pop contemporary stylization to it. But how are we getting these sounds? Well, there are three keys. First, you need to know what are called add two or add four chords. Second, you want to be able to play straight eighth notes. And third, you need to understand syncopation. So let's look at the first phrase. And notice that I'm not playing ordinary major and minor chords like I did earlier. Instead, we're using a very cool technique called the add two and the add four technique. And here's how it works. When you're playing your C major chord, if you add the two to this chord, it sounds awesome. If you go to the six chord, the A minor, and you add the four to this chord, it sounds great. On the F chord, the four chord, if you add the two, it sounds awesome. And on the five chord, the G, if you add the four, it sounds really nice. So let's see this in practice. Look on that C chord, we're adding the D, the two. The A chord, we're adding the D, which is the four. On the F chord, we're adding the G, which is the two. And look on this G chord, we're adding the C to it, which is the four. Second, notice how I'm playing all of the notes straight. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And third, I'm using syncopation, which is when you put your melody in between your beats on the and, like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. By the way, if you want to learn more about using the add two and add four chords, check out our one chord wonder course. You'll learn some amazing chord progressions like this and how to use this technique in a lot more detail. I'll put a link to that below. All right, in level number three, this is the early intermediate level and we're gonna make our chords sound a little more hip. Check it out. So as you can hear, this has a much more jazzy, bluesy sound, but how do you achieve this? Well, there are three keys. The first is to know your seventh chords. Second, you need to know chord extensions. And third, you need to know your chord alterations. So let's look at the first phrase. 
What we're doing is we're taking that ordinary chord progression and we're turning these chords into seventh chords. So the first chord is a C7, which has a bluesier sound. Our second chord, instead of playing an A minor, we're gonna make this an A7, giving it a bluesier, jazzier sound. On the third chord, instead of using that F, which is our four chord, we're gonna use a substitute chord called the D7. Okay, again, it's a bluesier, jazzier chord. And finally, on the five chord, instead of a G, we're gonna play a G7. Second, you wanna add what are called chord extensions to your chord. And if you take a chord like a C7, there are three chord extensions that you can add to this chord. One is called the nine, the next is called the 11, and the next is called the 13. A simple way to remember these are that they're just the second note, the fourth note, and the sixth note of your C major scale. Third, you need to know your chord alterations. And an alteration is when you take your 9, 11, and 13 and you alter them. So there are four alterations. You have a flat 9, a sharp 9, a sharp 11, and a flat 13. Once you understand these three concepts, you can start to use them on tunes like this. Like if we look at the first phrase, if we start on that C7 chord, these are all the notes of a C7, except I'm adding the A, which is the 13, and it gives it a jazzier sound. What about the A7? Well, it's an A7 chord, except we're adding the F and the C to the chord. Well, guess what? This is called the sharp nine, and this is the flat 13. And again, you can find these by playing the notes of A major. One, two, remember two is the nine, there's the sharp nine, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the 13, we flat it for the flat 13. And if we continue along, okay, on the D chord, this is a D7, except I'm adding an E to it, which is the nine, and then we play the G7 normally. By the way, if you wanna learn more about seventh chords, chord extensions, and chord alterations, we have full length courses on each of these topics. I'll put a link to those below. All right, we are at level number four. This is the late intermediate level, and check out what it sounds like. So this has a very cool jazz swing sound to it, but how do you achieve this? Well, the three keys to playing at this level are first, to know passing chords, second, you need to know walking bass lines, and third, you need to know ornamentation. So let's look at the first phrase. What I'm doing is I'm using some passing chords in between the chords that I used earlier. So if you recall, we started on a C7, we went to A7, D7, and then G7. Well, what I'm doing is I'm adding a chord in between these chords. These are called passing chords. So we have C7, B flat seven, that's the passing chord, A7, and then a little passing chord, E flat seven, into the D7, and then we end on the G7. By the way, this passing chord technique is called the tritone substitution technique, and it's when you add a passing chord a half step above your target chord. All right, the second key is to know walking bass lines. And for this technique, I use one of my favorite stock jazz bass lines, which goes like this. It's a really cool way to go from a one, six, two, five in your left hand by using upper neighbors. And the way it works is I go C, B flat, it's an upper neighbor to A, and then upper neighbor E flat to D, upper neighbor A flat to G, and then when we go back to C, we use the upper neighbor D flat. Now, if you really wanna make this sound authentic, you're gonna to wanna to add a little ghost note into this bass line. And a ghost note is when you throw in one extra note in between your beats to make it swing a little harder. And this is my favorite way of doing it. I go C, B flat, and instead of going right to the A, I'm gonna throw one more C in there, and that gives it a little swing. And then from here, I go E flat, but instead of going right to D, I'm gonna throw an A in, you see that? And then here, A flat, instead of going right to G, I'm gonna throw a little D in there. Does that make sense? 
and then D flat, instead of going directly to C, I'm gonna throw a G in there. So now our bass line sounds like this. The third key with this level is to know ornamentation. And ornamentation is basically when you decorate your melody, you add some additional notes and fills to kind of color it. So if you look at our first phrase, Notice I throw that little fill in there. Okay. I'm basically going from that E flat seven to my D seven using some chord tones. And then I go, you hear that? That's what I call the turn technique. I grab a note and then I turn on the next note of the melody and then I bring it up. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive on walking bass lines and how to add passing chords to your tunes, we have full length courses on both of these topics. I'll put a link to those below. All right, this is level number five, and this is one of the more advanced ways of playing the tune. Check it out. So this has a very old school jazz stride sound to it. So how do you achieve this? Well, first you need to know cluster chords. Second, you need to know runs. And third, you need to know the stride left hand. So if you look at the first phrase, you might notice that I use these big cluster chords in my right hand. You see these chords here? So on the C chord, I'm playing it like this, okay? This is called a C6-9, and I'm also sliding the E to give it kind of a bluesier sound. There's my E7, I'm adding the C and the F, which are called the flat 13 and the flat nine. Remember, these are chord alterations. And then on my A minor, I'm playing what's called an A minor 11. So I'm adding the seventh and the 11th to this chord, and remember that the 11th is a chord extension. The second thing I'm doing is I'm playing a run down the piano during the gap. Okay, basically I'm just playing a C7 right down to the F, and on the F chord I'm landing on the A. Okay, here it is slowly. The third thing I'm doing is I'm playing what's called a stride left hand. And the stride left hand is when you jump from the root up to the chord. So in this case, if we're playing a C6, we'll play it like this. But it's also really important to use tenths in the left hand. So instead of just going root up to the chord, I'm going tenth up to the chord. And what I like to do is roll my tenths and one and two. Now sometimes the chord changes on each beat and you can't jump up to the chord because the chord is different. And so in this case, I recommend that you use root seven. So it goes C, E seven, A minor, C seven, and then we're gonna go F up to the chord. By the way, if you wanna learn more about the stride style, check out our course after you've gone. We have courses for beginner all the way through advanced players. I'll put a link to those below. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this lesson, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels, where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.